All right, good. good morning. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. So welcome to our um, PBSD board meeting. We do have, uh, if we could have our music stop, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Um, we do have translation in Spanish. So if you need that support, please see Urania Lopez. So tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita de este servicio, por favor, pase con Urania Lopez. And um, if you would like to speak to um, an item on the agenda, please uh, complete a speaker card and hand it to Eva Renteria. Oh. And um, you need to you know, have that card in before the, the agenda item where public speakers can make their comments. Each speaker will have two minutes. And we'll move on to item 1.2, our Pledge of Allegiance. And I would like to ask Trustee De Serpa to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, salute. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, item 2.1, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Call second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 6 0. All right, we're going to move on to item 3.1, our provisional appointment. Um, each board member has four individual sheets containing the six interview questions. We have one sheet per applicant. Um, we do have our, our four applicants here. They were, you know, drew numbers for their order and they were given that order and that was randomly. So we have, um, the order is going to be Antonio Rivas, Lowell Hurst, um, Adam Bolaño Scow, and Lizette Zuniga Zamudio. And what we're going to be doing is the four applicants, um, Rocio is going to take them to a separate room so that they will not be hearing you know, the other candidates' responses. Each person will have you know, their own opportunity to answer their questions you know, anew. So um, since Antonio Rivas is the first person to answer, you can go ahead and stay at this time. But um, Rocio, if you would take the other three people to the room at this time, that would be great. So Eva, if you would please use the roll call cards to um, determine the first board member for question number one. Okay, for question number one. Trustee Flores. All right. And for question number two. For question number two, Trustee uh, v v Vice President Clerk. Okay. And for question number three. Question number three, Trustee Soto. All right. And for question number four? Question number four, uh, Dr. Holm. Okay. And for question number five? Question number five, Trustee Dodd, Jr. Okay. And for question number six? Uh, Trustee DeSerpa. All right. So, uh, Mr. Rivas, you can go ahead and come forward. You will have two minutes to respond to each question. And then after the six questions, you'll have, you can have two minutes to make a closing statement if you wish. All right, great. So if we want to go ahead and start, uh, Trustee Flores, you can go ahead and start with the first question. Hello, and thank you for being here today and putting your name in the hat. Um, the first question is, Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Trustee Rivas. I'm sorry, you're not a trustee. 
trusty candidate. There we go. Oh, here yeah, you we go. want to make sure people can okay. hear you. Oh, find it. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll start again. Honorable School Board members of Trustee, I come before you for the opportunity, really, to be appointed as your trustee in Area 6. In answer to the question, what do I bring to, to you as a trustee? Um, I'm someone that's been in, in education for 40 years. I'm retired. I've been, you know, in an experience, I have an experience not knowledgeable as a teacher, resource teacher, coordinator, counselor, and administrator for, in, for many years, in those years. Along with that, I have eight years with the Watsonville City Council in which I was um, uh, two years as mayor pro tem and also two years as mayor of the city of Watsonville. Uh, I've been, you know, as a, as a leader in my community for many years. And when I got elected with the city of Watsonville, it is very important to me that um, I bring you uh, an array of, of experience and knowledge in, in relation to education as well as the city government. I've been in many commissions like the Transportation Commission, the Metro Board, um, I've been in the Mayor's Council, I've been in the Criminal Justice, the Sheriff's, the Sheriff's Citizen Advisory Board, and also one of the things that I was very proud of was elected as the regional, regional president of the state of California League of Cities. Um, and you probably have my, a copy of my resume uh, of many other activities that I have done. So, so right now, presently, um, people have asked me to belong to different commissions. I'm on the, uh, the board of directors of the, of the Central Coast Red Cross, in which we did great this time. Thank and you. And raising a lot of money. So, um, and hopefully any of you have been able to provide, you know, funding uh, give money to, a, to, to our Red Cross. Thank you for, the, for that. We'll move on to okay. the next question. Okay. Yeah. And the last one, I just want to say, also I'm, I'm in the Commissioner for the Mental Health it, it's Commission. It's two minutes, sorry. Okay. That's it? Okay, yep. here we go. Another question. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Rivas. Um, so my question for you is, uh, how does an effective school board ensure parents and community members have opportunities to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? Well, we have, it's very important you know, for, with parents and, um, uh, to get involved in our community. Um, and I say, you know, some of the things that is very important to me to, uh, in regards to, to involve the community in any venue and to be transparent no matter what it is, and include, you know, with the budgets, uh, decisions that you make as, uh, as, as, you know, trustees. And for me, uh, I had that experience to do that as a member of the city council. Uh, we did that many times, uh, community members, community citizens, get involved in the community so we, so we can be able to, so the community can be able to trust whatever decisions that we made has trustees. I know sometimes, you know, we tend to keep some information out, but I think for me, as a member of, of, of this board, is to be open. Be open and, and transparent to our community in order to they be able to have the respect of our decisions. It's very important to me to see that. We did it that, we did it in the city council, we didn't have time. And, um, and all I can say to you is uh, we have to be transparent. We have to be transparent no matter what because the community is watching every policy, every decision that we make. And it's my, my intention as a trustee to be open and transparent so they can be able to trust our decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for question number three, Trustee Soto. Hey, good morning. Good morning. So what are you proud of in this district? And what would you like to accomplish as a school board member? It's a three-part question. And which is your highest priority and why? Are you clear on the question? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, one of the things that is very important that my goal is that 
One of the things that I really saw the, the superintendent um, theme, lift, in which I really believe in that kind of uh, uh, um, theme, in which you, probably all of you know that it's very important when I say that every person, every student, educational ecosystems, which that's what she said, which includes the students, the family, the staff, and a community that contributes to the development of vibrant, confident students on the pathway to fulfill the individual aspiration. This is a great thing, and that's something that all of us can be able to follow, and I believe that very strongly. Another thing that is, I would like to improve is to put attention to our students with disabilities. It's something that we have to improve that. Now with the pandemic, that will happen, they got behind. And they're not gonna be able to have that individual, personal uh, uh, instruction with our, with our students with disability. Also, the other thing is that we like to do is to be transparent in regards to the budget. More communication with each other. More communication uh, and, re and, and to be able to trust as his trustees. Because it's very important. When we make decisions, I know all of you care for the, for the students that were of this district. And hopefully, and everybody has different ways of doing it. But we have to come together and come up with the decisions and come to ways and we can be able to help each other. So when we, whenever we make a decision, we have to be together, along with the superintendent because we have to support our superintendent no matter what. It's important to that. So, and the other one is that we have to make celebrations for, our, for the district achievements and accomplishments that our students, they do within our school district. And I, I think that's it, and, and develop more wellness centers Thank with, you. Our, with our district. Thank you. Next question is mine. So okay. describe your response. If a parent engages you in a grocery store, and asks you for your support on a particularly controversial issue. Okay, we're gonna have those throughout the community, which we have that within the, our, when I was in the city council members. We have to listen to that person that they have a concern in regards to a, a certain issue. We can bring it up within a uh, school board, and depends on what the issue is, we have to discuss that issue, and, and hopefully we can be able to. One of the things I will first, I will ask that person is to write that complaint or concern so we can have it on record and we'll be able to see it. It can be a legal issue or it can be just a policy issue. So that's what we have to understand that. Uh, and that's when the superintendent and um, and the administration and the legal matters that we have to do, we have to work that, that concern that we need to resolve if it is important. If it is important and it's a concern that that particular individual have, eventually write it down, listen to it, and then maybe he can come before you, before the trustees to elaborate that concern and then at the same time, we as trustees be able to discuss this matter in a closed session and, and see what kind of solution we have for that particular uh, concern or uh, uh, that particular individual in regards to the school. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Dodge Jr. for question number five. Good morning, Good former morning. Council Member Rivas. Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, my question is, identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. What is it, can you explain a little bit? And how your personal and beliefs to determine how you would vote on the, on the issue. I can read the question again if you want. Okay. Uh, well, issues will be coming in um, in different ways. Um, and the issues sometimes, you know, it can be controversial. 
It can be very simple to come up with, to support. It can be a, it can be a ready of funding. It can be a ready of bonding, or, you know, to be able to go get some bonds. With my experience is that that's something that we will discuss with the superintendent and the administration to be able to see what those issues will be. And if it's an important issue of funding or things that we have to work on it, we are able to be able to discuss that matter and how we approach that. If we need to hire a consultant to deal with that issue so to give us some you know, more information or more way of doing that, that critical issues, that's fine. But at the same time, you know, because my experience, I've been working, you know, with every elected official in my years as a city council and also has, has the commissions that I serve with our state, federal, as well as local officials. And I have a good relationship with them. So if I need to discuss the matter and to approach that, those, those things that we need to do within, our, within the school, I will be a person that will help you, assist, and support you with those. I'm a person that, you know, be able to, they know me, and I know them. So, so I have that kind of resources with, with the involvement that I have done throughout my years working in, as a leader in, in this community. So that's the way I approach it. Okay, thank you. And Trustee DeSerpa for question number six. Hi, Mr. Rivas. Hi. Thank you so much for being here and for all your years of service to our community. Thank you. Um, what will you do to become an effective board member? Well, you know, it's, uh, to be effective in any role as an elected official, it's very important to, to be able to trust with each other. Communication is very important. The communication between each other is, for me, is very important, and the trust that we have within ourselves is very important to me. Because that's the way we make decisions and, and help our community. And in one way that we, we do, you know, as a member of the city council and, and you know, and, and a lot of commissions that I serve, we tend to, to work it out. I, of course, we're gonna have differences, different opinions, but at the same time, I think the main goal for us is to be able to, for the betterment of our students in this district, whatever it is. It can be a program, it can be funding, it can be else to do that, so. Uh, and you have to be a, a good listener, a great listener, in order to understand the issues. As a counselor for many years, uh, 25 years, and since also I work at Ronald Hills Middle School, and then at the high school, and Alisal High School in, in Salinas. So it's very important to, to have that communication, you know, when, with the principal, with the other staff members, and, and, and I did, I, I, and I do all those things throughout the years myself. And, um, and for me, that's, I think, you know, that's one of the main things that we need to do within our, as a trustee to listen, communicate, and trust with each other. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If you would like to make a closing statement, you have two minutes to do so. What? Oh. Uh, that, that was the sixth question, so if you would like to make a closing statement, you're welcome. Ah, a closing statement, okay. Um, well, really, my goal of being your trustee is, um, is to support and enhance the educational models that you have developed in the school district. And also to really to maximize the, uh, the student achievement, our students. It can be social, it can be emotional, the wellness and the safety of our members of our community is very important that, that our students are safe. Uh, and 
like as you try to see, my dedication will be full. Like I was in the city council 24 seven and that's what's gonna happen. We'll be there. I'm a person that will go to, you know, around my neighborhood, which I did many years. They know me. A lot of the parents now they have children and they know me. That's one of the purposes and reasons that I decided to to apply for this. Some of the members of my community, it's the same district, this is three is now six for the 30. They know me. They know all my, who I am and why I have done for them. So, plus, you know, is I still involved with the commissions in different ways, uh, political wise, in different ways that I can be able to support and help. And I wanted to say one thing. My daughter, when all of them went, went to Pajaro Valley School, they said they graduated from Watsonville High School. And my daughter is uh, now in that. You know, she's a speech and language uh, therapist. She served, she's a student trustee. I was very proud of at that time. She was a wildcat, she was a mascot, and at the same time she served as a student trustee. And for me it's very important that students get involved. It's important that we can be able to, to celebrate what our students are doing in every way, every month, and I think you do. And, um, and I just wanted to continue to provide uh, the continuity and support towards achieving the best of our students. And it's important. And lift, for me, Thank you. is something that is very important to me because I, I think that's what my heart and soul is with the students and with the community. Thank you, so Mr. So I thank you for this opportunity and hopefully I will appreciate your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Rocio, you can take three of us to the, the waiting room and then bring in our ne bring in uh, Mr. Hurst. Mr. Rivas, you'll go with Rocio. It'll just be a few minutes till we bring in the next candidate. So yes, yeah, so we have uh, just as a reminder, we have you know, our candidates waiting in a, a, a room just kind of around the hall. Rocio is going to go grab the next applicant, which is Lowell Hurst. She'll bring him in, and we'll start with the next round of questions. And just while we have a moment, I just want to remind people that if you do want to make a public comment, that you need to have that speaker card in before we go on to item 3.2. So if you want to make a public comment, get that in before we move on to that item.
this where we're going? Do we have a copy of the questions for Mr. Hurst? Dr. Rodriguez, do we have an extra copy of the questions for Mr. Hurst? Um, we did get the text. Yeah. Um, actually, we'll just um, tear off the top sheet and then write that. Tear off the top oh, sheet? Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. Well, good morning. Good. So what, what we'll do is we'll, um, each of the trustees will ask you a question. We'll have two minutes to offer a response, and then at the end you'll have uh, two minutes to offer a closing statement. All right? Six questions, right? Six questions. And uh, Trustee Flores has the first question. Hello, and thank you for being here today and stepping forward and wanting to serve. Your first question is, please summarize the strengths you would bring as a board member? Well, strengths are always in the eyes of the beholder. And from my perspective, I would bring you a certain degree of talent with public meetings, uh, a certain uh, level of experience in working with uh, complex situations, boards, budgets, personnel, from my experience as a, uh, as a city council member and a, a board member of other boards. And I would also bring you knowledge in that I'm familiar with Ed Code, having been a teacher for 32 years and a representative of the employee uh, organization when I was active as a teacher. And so it's knowledge, experience, and I think a certain temperament that I'm a pretty easygoing guy that doesn't get flustered very often. I can take the heat, and sometimes I give it out a little bit too, and that, you know, sometimes works in my, my detriment because, you know, if you give it out, you have to be able to take it a little bit too. But So temperament, experience, knowledge, those are the strengths that I would see. I would also say there's a, a lot of community connection that I have been around a long time and know many people in the room behind me as well as in the community, particularly uh, District uh, Area 6. So, you know, some familiarity with the community, familiarity with uh, educational systems, part of that knowledge and experience. Uh, could I add anything else in 20 seconds? Well, you know, with me, you also kind of get a package. The uh, Wendy Hurst is, uh, my wife, is uh, pretty familiar with uh, educational systems. And her and I have uh, spent a lifetime of working in educational communities, and that's a strength. Uh, trustee, or uh, Vice President Acosta, you've got question number two. Good morning, Mr. Hurst. Um, how does an effective school board ensure parents and community members have opportunities to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? Well, you're doing that today, and you've done that at every meeting to make sure that the public is heard, that the public is invited, that the public is advised ahead of time as to what you're going to uh, deal with, that the agenda is transparent, that it's well communicated to the public, that the public has a chance to weigh in and offer their suggestions, their advice, their comments, their criticism quite often. You know, that's, that's part of the, uh, the boardmanship that you have to live with and, and display is how well you can uh, take the advice of the public and, and what kind of advice you solicit from the public as well. So I think there's lots of opportunities for the public to express their support, their concerns, ask questions, find out what's going on on the agenda, and offer their, uh, their, their input and advice, suggestions, and as I said, concerns. So the question is about opportunities. Yes, there's many opportunities for the public to to weigh in. The board's responsibility is to listen to the public and to try and act in their best interest, in their children's best interest, and provide educational opportunities that are going to be in, enriching and 
you know, focused on achievement, and that's where the public wants to see its uh, dollars spent in, in most regards, is effectiveness and academic achievement. And so I think there's lots of ways the public can reach you, and you know, communication continues to evolve. There'll be new methods of communication in the future, I'm sure. But I think the public, if they're interested, has more than ample opportunity to reach out and have contact with you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Soto, you've got question number three. Good morning, Lowell. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. So this is a three-part question. Um, so the first one is, what are you proud of in this district? Second is, what would you like to accomplish as a, as a school board member? And what is your highest priority and why? Well, I think, you know, for me personally, having been an employee of this school district for 32 years, that's a pretty significant accomplishment to be able to come here and stick with it and find, you know, find my niche in education, uh, advance myself academically. I have a, a bachelor's degree in agricultural sciences. I have a, a lifetime teaching credential in in CTE, agricultural, uh, uh, hands-on, as well as uh, ag science. I'm, I'm proud of my uh, academic background. I have a master's in education, educational leadership and administration. And so I'm, I'm proud of the academic stuff that I've done personally. For the district, I'm, I'm proud that uh, we're making progress and that we have served so many students over the years. And I see them every day in the community. Someone's coming up to me and saying, hey, Mr. Hurst, do you remember me? I was in your, uh, in your horticulture class. I was in your ag science class. You know, there's a lot of pride in seeing students advance. Um, I forgot the last part of your question. What was it? I'll repeat it. Second one is, so what would you like to accomplish as a school board member? And then the last one is, which is your priority and why? Well, what I would like to accomplish as a school board member is have a very high-functioning board and a high-functioning system of education which promotes achievement and academic uh, skills and preparing students for life outside of sitting at a desk as well. You know, real hands-on live experiences. And so to, to, to help students and to... Thank you. Sorry, I lost track of the time on that one. That's all right. I have the next question. Um, describe your response. If a parent engages you in a grocery store, and asks for your support on a particularly controversial issue? Well, that's a really easy one for me because I'm in the grocery store a lot, and there's always someone picking up a cucumber and waving it at me and, and telling me what I did right or did wrong on the city council for all those years. And so I know how to handle myself in the grocery store, and I, and I know how to uh, work with parents and listen to their complaints and ask them clarifying questions about their concerns and the controversial issues that arise. And so I think that it's, that's another skill set that I have is being able to talk with, you know, sometimes people are dissatisfied for a lot of different reasons. And, and so to have some conversations with them about the nature of their dissatisfaction and to try and pry out of them what they are happy about as well. So, you know, to communicate effectively with parents, and it's not just parents, you know, it's taxpayers and business folk in the community and employers and, and everybody else that has concerns about education and the, the quality of education and how much students are learning and what they're learning. There's always lots of questions, some of them more philosophical than others, but a lot of them are real practical, hands-on questions that we can find answers to and fix. And so 
to have that conversation and be able to refer them to uh, real answers and real resources and real having a real dialogue with them, I think that's the secret of that. What are my, what are my priorities? Academic achievement, opportunities for students to be productive members of our community in whatever way that they are, can be most productive, whether it's uh, in an intellectual pursuit or a career that's very hands-on. And so that would be my priority, serve parents, serve students, build academic teamwork, and promote achievement. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Dodge Jr., question number five. Good morning, former City Council Member Lowell Hurst. Thank you for being here today. My question is, identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how you would vote on the issue? Well, that's a pretty tough one because, you know, you guys uh, have had a lot of controversial issues over, over the years, you know, how you inter interface with the employees. I've heard the teachers come and, and you know, they're discontent about a lot of things and, and how that gets handled. I think, the, you know, the, the, the incident that stands out to me, and I don't know if it's a good incident or not, but it was the, um, the terrible tragedy that took place at Aptos High School and, you know, the controversy over the, uh, the SROs. And I, I'm sure that's still a dialogue that, that continues to uh, evolve, but I think student safety is, is as important as their academic uh, learning because if you're not safe, you're probably not going to learn, and if you don't feel safe, you don't. And so how the inter that interacted with the uh, various agencies, the sheriff, uh, the, the, the Watsonville PD, uh, all the law enforcement, I know you took a lot of criticism on all sides, and I suspect you probably still have some more criticism about the, the best approach to student safety. You know, from, from what I know and what I've experienced, you know, as a high school teacher, you know, safety's uh, on everybody's concern, but it shouldn't, we shouldn't live in fear. We should feel confident that we are safe and that we're in a safe learning environment. And so to send that message and to reinforce it with the public is extremely important. To be good partners with the uh, agencies that support us regarding student safety, I think that's pretty important too. We need to build partnerships, cooperative positions where we understand what they can do for us and what our role is with them. So I don't know if that's a, a direct response to your question, but that's all the time I have. Uh, question number six, Trustee DeSerpa. Hi, Mr. Hurst. Thank you for being here. Thank you again for your service to both the district and to our community at large. What will you do to become an effective board member? Well, to me, that's an easy one, too, because I would study up and I would learn and I would, you know, review what has been successful in the past and where we have challenges, and I would be in communication, you know, with, within the Brown Act guidelines with, with the, uh, the board members and administration and the community as to what does the board need to do to be effective. You need to be a, an effective communicator, and you need to be able to do things and get things done, and so, I would want to be active in listening, studying up, figuring out what has worked in the past and where there are huge challenges. And of those challenges, do research into how do we find answers, how do we build partnerships, how do we reach across the aisle on things we don't agree with, you know, philosophies that, you know, we don't always share. I'd be a good listener, I'd study up, and I would 
take action that hopefully yields positive results for parents, students, staff, program development, a, a bridge to the future. Those are the kind of things that, that I would do that strike me as common sense approaches in being a good board member and actively participate in all your activities and touch base with uh, what goes on in the region and the state. Those are the kind of things that I think would assist myself and hopefully other board members in communicating, learning, sharing, and not being afraid to act. Thank you. If you, okay. if you would like to make a closing statement, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, this opportunity doesn't come up uh, all the time, and so that's why I'm here today, because I am available, and I, you know, with my uh, being termed out on the city council, and I really enjoyed the city council, because he had to do a lot of the same things that the board has to do here, and that means listen, learn, touch base with the community, take the pulse of what's going on, but you also have a lot more to do, too, with uh, understanding where, where the state's at with education, what the limitations are financially with the employees and others, where the resources are, where the opportunities are. That, that all takes a lot of digging in and, and studying and, and being ready to uh, participate. And so that's why I'm here today, because you know you have this opening, I have the availability, but why am I a good candidate? Well, there again, it's the knowledge that I bring to the table as a, an experienced teacher, as an experienced policy maker, and I've sat on other boards besides just the city council, municipal air boards, uh, a lot of recycling boards and uh, solid waste and trash boards and that kind of stuff that sometimes is kind of contra controversial as well. But I'm bringing you what you see is what you get. I'm well known in the community as well, liked by some, maybe disliked by a few, but I think I've earned my stripes and I, I'll continue to be available to assist the community in whatever way I can, if it's not in this position, some other way while I still have a little gas in the tank to, to go forward in my life. But I bring a lot of experience that, that includes a lot of knowledge, and there again, I think I've got the temperament to fit in and do a good job for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurst. And um, if you'll uh, follow uh, Rania, she'll take you to the waiting area. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. And for, for those uh, members of the public who have just recently joined us, what we're doing is the, our, the applicants are waiting in a separate room. The next uh, applicant will be coming in. That will be um, Adam Bolaños Scow. If you would like to comment at item 3.2, please put your speaker card in now, because once item 3.2 starts, we won't be taking further comment cards. Welcome. Thank you. So um, we each, the, each of the trustees has a question for you. You'll have two minutes to respond, and then at the very end, you'll have an opportunity uh, to make a closing statement, and you'll have uh, two minutes for that. And Trustee Flores has the first question for you. Hello, and welcome, Mr. Scow. Thank you for um, wanting to serve our community. My first question for you is, please summarize the strengths you would bring as a board member. 
thank you, Trustee Flores, and to all the trustees and, and to the district for holding this, uh, this meeting, very important meeting and an important conversation. Um, I come from a family of, of teachers. I have become an unexpected, almost full-time music teacher myself, working with PVUSD kids on almost a daily basis. And so it's been an honor uh, and a privilege to serve them. Um, for those who don't know, I am trained as a violinist. Uh, I've had kind of dual careers in my life as an environmental advocate and as a violinist playing classical mariachi. Uh, Javier Vargas is here, a mariachi hero in our community and, and, I, oh, and as are, are others. And so it's been really um, an amazing experience to be working for El Sistema Pajaro Valley, uh, a program supported by Dr. Rodriguez, and I want to acknowledge her support of the arts, and I think that's been a wonderful thing for our community. I apologize for my voice. I'm getting over some congestion, so that's, I'm not trying to talk like the godfather on purpose. Um, I w I'll bring a sense of fairness. Uh, I, w I believe good board members will listen to their community, ask questions, not make assumptions. Um, I want to do this because I want to serve, and I believe I can make a difference. Uh, I'm, it's no secret, I think we got to make improvements. Um, I c we need to have fully staffed schools. In my opinion, our district is not fulfilling its mission if we have too many missing teachers, not even enough subs, if we're not paying enough money so teachers can afford to live here. We have school districts in Salinas starting off at 61,000, we're at 50. That's what it is in Fresno, California, where the cost of living is significantly cheaper. So I will be an advocate for resources on our campuses. Uh, and I will do that professionally and collaboratively with all of you. Um, certainly I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because I care. I know I can make a difference. And I think I appreciate the diversity of talents of our community and of this board. So I'll start with that. Thank you. Vice President Acosta, you have the second question. Sorry about that, I also get a big timekeeper. Um, good morning, Mr. Scow, and welcome. Um, how does an effective school board ensure parents and community members have opportunities to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? Thank you for that question, Trustee Acosta. I think the, the heart of it, and I think the big challenge is, is really the budget. and that, and. As a board member, if I'm selected or have an opportunity to serve, I think we have to have a lot of transparency around our budget. It's no secret that there's challenges there. I've, I've heard that, well, we can't afford these resources at our schools. There's just not enough money. And um, I'm also a union member. I've been part of negotiations as a musician's union. I think we have to bring a lot of transparency around the budget because the school district does not belong to the board or to anybody it belongs to the community and I think as a board we have to realize we're we're servants of the community and so and I would like to see vocational arts and music in all the schools and in order to do that we have to we have to pay wages that allow people to live here and so um, back to more specifically specifically to your question the budget we have to open that up so really see how are we spending money and what can we do to fix the problem? And maybe there are bigger forces at work. Maybe we're gonna need more state and federal help. I really believe the school district is the reflection of the priorities of our society. And so I just can't accept an excuse that we just don't have enough money to have fully staffed schools. Um, and so that's what I've been hearing from the teachers who have, who have been talking to me, the classified workers, some of whom are just barely making state minimum wage, who have been working for years serving our district. I talked to somebody in our community the other day She's been working 25 years for our district full time, and she's now making a salary of about $45,000 a year. And so I think we have to update with the times. If we want what's best for our students, we have to have competitive and professional wages. And, and getting back to the budget, I want to see more transparency. I want it to be easier to have public comment, uh, have board meetings. It's, it's challenging. People are overworked. I get I don't. It's hard for people to participate, but I want, as a board member, I will be proactive and, and I would like to bring that spirit of trying to really go, go to the community. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Soto, you have question number three. Morning, Adam. Thank Welcome. You. So my question is a three-part question. Uh, 
So the first uh, section is, what are you proud of in this district? And the second is, what would you like to accomplish as a board member? And lastly is, which is your highest priority and why? I think one of the things I'm most proud of uh, and why I want to be a part of it is I see the dedication of so many people at all different levels of this district. I put in my application for the teachers who have been here 20, 30 years, certainly here not because of the money, because they really love our kids. They love the community. Uh, for the classified staff who have been working here 25, 30, but not just the 25, 30 years, but that kind of dedication matters uh, for our board members, for our staff. Um, I know there's, there's some reason why we all came to education, why we're part of education. And so I think the spirit of our community uh, is a strength and something we can harness on further, build, on, build upon further to make our district even better. Um, as a board member, um, no secret that I want to increase wages, especially at the floor, uh, for teachers and classified workers in order to have fully staffed schools. I think that's just very basic, and, and I'll, at the, the risk of being repetitive, I'm probably going to repeat it uh, a few more times. But that's just, that's not rocket science. If we're losing people to Salinas, uh, San Jose, if we're only getting young teachers for a few years and then they have to leave, we might have to look at creative partnerships with other government agencies to try to find ways to build truly affordable housing because if we're really honest about the market rate housing that's being built, it's not affordable to 70% of us. And I'm in that same income bracket, so I know exactly what that's like. Um, and so we're, uh, the second part was, Second and third parts, I'm conflating. Can you report? So the first one was your pride oh, yeah. in the district. The second was accomplishments. And the last one is, which is your highest priority and why? Well, I think I was hitting on the highest priority. I think the, the accomplishments around the arts and the music were off to a great start, but we got to build on that. Uh, parents ask me, can I sign up for your class? Are, are you at McQuitty? Are you at Hall? It's not at your school. And, and uh, to be truly fair, it really needs to be at all the schools. And to serve, to be, you know, use the word equity, it really needs to be at all the schools. And I know we're off to a good start, but that's gonna take a little more uh, investment. And again, coming back to the budget, thank you. Thank you, I have the fourth question. Describe your response if a parent engages you in a grocery store and asks for your support on a particularly controversial issue. Mm, my response, well, there's a lot of controversial issues in the schools these days, no question about it. And I've been having some of the conversations for the last three, four years, and I'm going to continue to have them. And I mean, I think I'm not, we can't be afraid of controversy because usually there's energy there just because people care. And they might have a different take on things. And, and sometimes you have to agree to disagree on some things, and you agree to agree about other things. That's, that's just life. That's, that's politics. That's governance. Um, I want to be very accessible as a board trustee uh, to not just my area, and I think it's uh, maybe an advantage, I would say, to be working in an after-school music program for El Sistema, being able to talk and work with families from all over our district. And so um, I'm already in having these conversations with them. I think it's, it's very, very important um, because as a board trustee, I think good policy, um, I come, part of my family comes from high academia, and there's a sense sometimes that good policy is always top down, like the experts set the policy for the people. And there's definitely a need for research, data, and understanding. But good policy also is bottom up. It's understanding what's actually happening with our community, what's our families, and listening to making sure it's working. If people, um, and so that's the art, I think, of, of being a board trustee and being uh, serving in a governing body is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know and always soliciting feedback. Uh, so that's, um, I'm not afraid of making a controversial decision when need be, that's, that's part of leadership. Um, and I'm sure people will take shots at me and that's, that's part of governance and people have taken take, shots at all of you, I'm sure. It's not nice, but um, that's democracy and it's, uh, that's part of the deal. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Dodge Jr., you have the fifth question. Good morning, and thank you for being here, Mr. Scow. Identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how you would vote on the issue. 
Well, one, one thing that comes out, and I've taken some criticism for it, um, when I pointed out the, uh, the laying off of some of the unfilled classified positions. Some of those included instructional aides, custodians. We used to have more custodians at some of the schools. And from what I'm being told from the workers is that, well, if we're not paying enough in the wages, people aren't going to take the job. And so it be kind of becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy in a negative spiral where if we don't pay enough, then people aren't going to get the... And so that's something where I think I've been visiting some of our schools, not just in my area and the other and in the other areas where I'm talking to the workers and they're saying we're overstretched We're we are trying to cover for each other. We can't do everything. Sometimes we can't clean, get to this part of PV high or this part of the middle school because we don't have enough staff. And so therefore, sometimes not the class. I mean, that's a very basic issue, but it gets to the point of understaffing. And so. I don't, I'm going to be against laying off positions, any more positions at the schools. And I think we need to bring some back. And if the excuse is that, well, there's just no money for it, then that gets back to having a transparent conversation about the budget and not just something, you know, amongst us, but with the community. So that's, that's something that comes to mind. Um, and, and, and any other decision like that, um, yeah, I'm going to be listening and meeting with, with, workers at all levels of our district getting there. And I want to get the facts. I'm going to be asking questions and I want to say, and then I'm going to be asking more questions and then I'll be asking more questions. I think our job as board trustees is to ask why, 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 and then why, and, and do that in a transparent way. Thank you. Trustee DeSerpa, you've got question number six. Thank you. Thank you for your service to our district in the area of uh, Elsa STEM and music. I, looked at your application, it was great. Um, what will you do to become an effective board member? To become an effective board member, I would say um, I'm gonna put the time into it. I'm gonna put the time into meeting. Uh, I'd like to meet all, with all of you. I'd like to meet with, with our staff and the administrator, with Dr. Rodriguez, certainly. I'm gonna continue to meet with our workers, our teachers, and our classified, and their leadership as well, and also people I know who are, who are on the job, and with families and parents. Um, that's it's got to be a constant conversation I think a constant feedback cycle I, I, that that probably is most important um, I do want to show some leadership in trying to resolve the staffing crisis issue that so many parents and teachers are telling me about they don't have prep time uh, or understaffed somebody gets sick and the whole school day gets ruined because everybody is trying to cover for each other. And at the end of the day, everybody's wiped out. I've seen this at several schools and the morale sinks. So that, I'm repeating myself of coming back to that staffing thing. So I do want to be an advocate for the campuses and not just my area, all the campuses. All, there's different needs, different places in different areas. But an under-resourced campus just makes it harder for everybody. And so... Um, that will be a priority of mine. I would like to work with the administration on promoting the arts even further. I think we have some amazing things going on with the Arts Council, with the County Office of Education, uh, with the state bond that passed in the fall. I'm glad to see arts, the hunger for arts is coming back because we remember my generation and older generations, we had orchestras, we had bands, my, everybody had music. Their flute. And then we had a bunch of people, well, that's not needed, let's cut that, that's not... Science and math are more important. Mm. Science and math are very important. Reading and writing are extremely important. But there's a diversity of talents in humanity and needs. And we saw in the pandemic essential workers, people who are really keeping our society going. And it wasn't just the computer programmers, it was people with vocational skills, people who knew how to fix things. So I think we need to value that in the global context. I think we're realizing how important it is to have Americans who know how to do those things for our own security. Thank you. If you'd like to make a closing statement, you have two minutes to do that. Well, thank you very much for this uh, conversation, these questions. Um, I got to say I'm a little bit excited about this opportunity. Um, I want to clear up any misconceptions about why I'm doing this or, or what my motivations are. And, I've, and, and it's been everything I've been saying to you and in my application. 
I'm, I am passionate. I'm an advocate. There's no question about that. But the pride I take in working with others is to actually achieve solutions, not just to talk for the sake of being righteous. And so that's what I want to accomplish as a board trustee is to work with all of you to actually find solutions and achieve those solutions. That's my vision of success. I'm not here to go after anybody uh, in particular. I'm not even into blame and shame. I do believe in responsibility. I believe that this board has a responsibility to figure stuff out. And that's what I want to do and what I will bring and work in good faith with all, all of you. That's, that's the only way it's going to get done. Um, I can only speak for myself and, and I hope that uh, the other candidates and I think the board was wise to undergo a provisional appointment and saving $80,000. I think it'd be a shame if somebody forced that anyways because they had their own agenda. Um, it was a unanimous decision. I did get 2,441 votes. That was more votes than the winning candidate got in 2012 and in 2008. So I think I do have some support in the community and I wanna keep building on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if there's anyone else who's just joined us, what's happening is that the um, applicants are in a separate room. Our last applicant, Lizette Zuniga Zamudio, will be joining us shortly. And um, if you would like to, like after this, we will be going into public comments. If you would like to make a public comment, you need to fill out a speaker card before we start that because we won't be accepting additional comments once we start the public comment period, okay? So we'll just take a couple of minutes. A um, couple of the okay. trustees need a moment. Okay. That was an alarm. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get started again. So um, each of the trustees will ask you a question. If I can have the room quiet, please. We're starting again. Um, each of the trustees will ask you a question. You will have two minutes to respond. At the very end, you will have an opportunity to give a closing statement, and you'll have two minutes for that as well. Um, so uh, Trustee Flores has the first question for you. Hello, Ms. Zuniga, and thank you for stepping forward and wanting to serve our community. Uh, your first question is, please summarize the strengths you will bring as a member of the board. So 
So the strengths I would bring as a member of the board would have to be, um, I would say my leadership skills. Oh, do I need to turn it off? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I would say my leadership skills. Um, I feel like I'm, I've been an advocate for my own children um, for as long as they've been at school and being involved at their schools, um, I feel like I can you know, advocate for all of PVUSD. Um, it's a passion of mine that, of education in general, uh, it's a passion of mine. And so I work in education, higher education, so I think um, my strength in understanding how important it is, um, I can bring um, you know, very fresh perspectives of how it is right now and, and um, listen and advocate for all of PVUSD. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Um, Trustee Acosta, you have question number two. Sorry about that. I'm also timekeeper. Um, okay. Welcome, Mrs. Zamudio. Um, Zamudio, sorry. Um, so my question is: How does an effective school board ensure parents and community members have opportunities to express their diverse range of views to afford board deliberations on important policy issues? I think an effective school board um, can ensure parents um, and our community members by listening to them by understanding their input and taking action, um, having an action plan, having a goal plan, um, and just doing what needs to be done, um, either whether it's research or collecting data um, input from other people to be able to um, accomplish what's being expressed and as far as concerns and issues. So I think that's very important um, to our community to be able to listen to them and advocate for them. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Soto, you have question number three. Good morning, Lisette, and welcome. Good morning, thank you. I have question number three. And it's a three-part question. Uh, the first part is, what are you proud of in this district? The second is, what would you like to accomplish as a board member? And lastly is, which is your highest priority and why? Okay. What I am proud of of this district, um, I feel like because I'm a, I, I want to say I'm a product of the district. I attended all, you know, elementary, which I went to Hall District, Pajaro Middle School, and Rolling Hills, as well as Watsonville High School. So I'm very proud that I am a product of the district and my children both attend the district as well. I think um, when I do bring up concerns or issues, they've always, they're always heard and something's always done about it. Um, I have to give a shout out to Mr. Leite at Calabasas because he listens to me, he follows up, as well as Mr. Westfall. I mean, I think following up, it's just, I'm proud that our district and our, uh, our staff are doing that um, when I have my own concerns. Um, what I would like to accomplish being on the board is I notice that when I bring up certain programs or ask about them, I'm noticing that they are at certain schools but not at my school. So I would love to, um, accomplish for these programs to be at every single school, for every single PVUSD student, not just at some. Um, and my highest priority <clears throat> would have to be, um, I think I would say the same thing about the programs, just being able to make sure that they're um, available for all students at PVUSD, um, as well as being able to use my creativity and um, the ideas that I have as well for other programs um, since I get to see it and ask about it every single day to my kids, I feel like I, um, you know, I get to see it. I get to ask what's working for them, what's not. Um, so being able to um, speak about, you know, in, with my own experience, with my own kids, and um, be able to help with that, I think that's one my priority. I want to be a part of that. I want to help, and not just my own kids, but our all of our kids and our community, the families and the staff. They all matter. So that's my priority. Thank you. I have the fourth question, and that is to describe your response if a parent engages you in a grocery store and asks, asks for your support on a particularly controversial issue. 
Okay, my response if a parent engages me at a grocery store. I feel like I'm, I, I know about confidentiality. I know certain issues need to be only brought up in a more, um, you know, a different environment for, aside from the grocery store. I feel like um, it could be brought or talked about at a more private um, location and then um, just making sure that I just follow the policies. I mean, if there's something that I can help, I wanna just make sure that I know my line, I don't cross the line, um, and you know, just be able to help as much as I can without crossing any boundaries, without jeopardizing my position if I were to be bored. Um, so I think that's how I would approach it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Trustee Dodge Jr., you have question number five. Good morning, Ms. Zunica. Good to see you here today. Good morning. Thank you. Um, identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. <laughs> I think I would identify um, salaries. I think I feel strongly about how s teachers and staff um, just need to be heard in that sense. Um, I think we need to maybe make a change on that. Um, I think I strongly, um, I felt strongly about it. Um, especially because I work in higher education. I know how important it is. And, and I've actually have worked as a temp as a, an HR at, for the district a long time ago. And I saw the turnaround with teachers and staff. Um, so I think um, bringing up concerns about that would be a priority to me. Uh, um, because at the end of the day, they're teaching our students. And our students are a priority as well. Um, I understand that we there are federal laws that do need to be followed. It's not just the you know someone asking. It's just the yeah sure a hundred grand or you know whatever a large amount that doesn't sound reasonable. I think following those federal laws and um, considering them is important. Um, and I think my personal values and beliefs. Um, definitely um, would help. Uh, make the decision since I do feel like I carry myself with respect and I would respect everybody everybody's decision and and um and input so thank you hmm? trustee de Serpa, you have the last question thank you and um thank you Lizette for um for putting your hat in the ring thank you. um I did read your application and I want to thank you for your service as site council chair and uh, service on DLAC is a really important thank um, you. positions to hold it's where I started as well, so. Yes. Um, what will you do to become an effective board member? What I, do, what, I, what I would do to become an effective board member is always show up, always be here, um, do my research, put in the extra work to be a, the best member. Um, I understand sometimes not just coming to the required meetings is gonna be enough, I understand that setting time aside and dedicating it to learn more about becoming a better member, communicating with you know whoever I'm supposed to, principals, teachers, um, organizing extra meetings if possible, just to be able to hear um, you know everyone and be able to just advocate for everyone from our community. I think it's important. So I think I'm dedicated and I have that growth mindset. So I, I think that would make me a, a really effective board member. Thank you. Um, you have two minutes to make a closing statement if you would like to do so. I would. Okay. I need a card. So first I wanna say thank you for this opportunity and I'm super grateful to be here, especially standing in front of amazing leaders of our community. I was born and raised here in Watsonville. I grew up as a migrant student. I am Latina, bilingual and biliterate. I'm a mother of two amazing children who both attend PBUSD. 
Calabasas Elementary and Rolling Hills Middle School, and I'm very involved in their education and their extracurricular activities. I have great re relationships with their staff and principals because I ask a lot of questions and express my concerns, and I'm always looking for ways to better support my children, and I make myself accessible to my children's school to volunteer and help with events or donations. I have been volunteering as a youth basketball coach since a long since long before I had children due to my love for teaching and educating kids to become outstanding individuals. I may not have served on city council or on board yet. However, I have been president of my vocational school CET site council, president for Calabasas school site council, and vice president for a previous employer's fr fresh perspectives. Within every one of these, I was voted in by my peers, parents, teachers, and my colleagues. I consider myself a leader, and I understand the importance of professionalism, trust, loyalty, and confidentiality. I can create excellent professional relationships, as I'm hoping I do with you all. Working and attending higher education has expanded my passion for supporting our students, as well as parents and the qualified staff and faculty whom we put our trust in to help us guide and mold our children at PVUSD, grow into successful scholars, and become career and life ready. I'm a product of this district as I attended you know, all the schools I mentioned. And I appreciate the significance and the support of, encouraging, uh, of an encouraging environment um, our schools provide. I'm familiar with the LCAP goals and I'm ready to be ready and committed to joining the board of trustees by making the time to excel in this position. I'm a lifelong learner with the purpose of transferring my passion for learning at PVUSD and I am excited and hopeful to continue to give back to my community as being a part of the board and help you make positive, effective, competent, fair, and responsible decisions to meet our community's needs. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All Thank right. You. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so um, I'll make one last call. If there's any other folks here who would like to make a public comment, Please turn in your uh, comment card now. Because after once we start the public comment section, we won't be taking any further uh, public comments. Um, so, do, or we can have all the if they say yes or no. yeah. If we can have our, our um, applicants sit in the front, that would be great. All right. In that case. We're going to move our table out of the way. Um, I was just going to keep it going in case I just wanted it. Uh, ah, yeah. All right. Now. Okay. Yeah. We will move on to item 3.2, um, our public comments. And so each public speaker will have two minutes. How many uh, public comment cards do we have? Um, Yes, President Holm, we have uh, 20 public comment cards. All right. We can go ahead and start on those. Okay. I'm, um, I will call these out um, by threes, and if I mispronounce your um, name, please do feel free to correct me. I like to be corrected. Um, John Walder, Anne, Dr. Ann Lopez, I think it's Dr. John Walder, excuse me, Dr. Ann Lopez, and Laura Zucker. So if you could come up in that order, and we'll start with your public comments. Well, the, the podium. The podium. The podium. Oh, oh, sorry, the podium. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Th and, um, thanks for all the hard work you're doing. I'm here to uh, to tell you about Adam and why I support him. Um, my background is uh, I'm an emergency room doctor at Watsonville Hospital. Used to work in this building, further down. Fortieth uh, year there. Been on many boards. Um, very uh, dedicated to this community. My two boys both went through the P Pajaro Valley School District. Um, 
I think you heard Adam, and I think that speaks for itself. Um, I can tell you that he, he is passionate. He has a vision. He really wants to change things, improve things. Um, in his in his uh, his statement, um, I think what is most impressive is that Adam has not only talks but walks the walk as well. He is a violin instructor for this school, um, unpaid because he has a passion for bringing music, education, and arts to children. And I can tell you, I agree with uh, what Adam said, is that this is as important as science, math, um, humanities. Um, and, uh, you know, Adam really believes this, and he is not afraid to take on things that have seemed not possible for a lot of organizations, school districts included. Um, his, his passion, I think he'll be a very effective board member. I think his heart is in the right place, and uh, I hope you vote him. I think he'll be a tremendous asset to the, the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Ann Lopez. I'm the director of Center for Farm Worker Families, and I'm here to support Adam uh, to become one of your board members. Um, not only is he an instructor and doing an incredible job of uh, providing beautiful music all over the area, <laughs> but um, also he's compassionate for teachers, wanting them to have higher salaries and so on. But what interests me the most is the fact that he's been on many boards related to environmental issues. Uh, Watsonville Wetland Watch, the Sierra Club, he's worked for Food, uh, food and Water Watch, um, various boards that relate to the environment, which is my background. And I want, I, I have been working with the, the farm worker communities in Watsonville now for uh, at least 25 years. And quite frankly, I am sick and tired of meeting families with at least one child related who's been exposed to pesticides and has some anomaly, uh, cancer, birth defects, ADHD, autism spectrum, learning disability. How can we possibly expect these children to learn when their, their basically future is being hijacked by these awful chemicals? And I would like to have Adam on the board to present this environmental perspective because uh, I just think it's unethical that these children are being thrown under the bus this way. I see too many of them. So I encourage you to include Adam and his knowledge of the environment and pesticides in your group and his perspective. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is Laura Zucker. I'm a retired teacher, um, but I taught at um, Hyde, got my t-shirt, and a Mesty, and at Duncan Holbert a little bit, and that was wonderful. Um, so I am here also to um, urge you to appoint Adam Bolaño Scow to this position. Um, he's been a great advocate, truly, for children and their families, in terms of what our previous speaker was talking about, safety um, at, at campus, on the campuses in terms of you know, um, the problem with pesticides around the schools. But he's also been a great, um, com a great advocate for teachers and for certificate staff. As he said, he would push for better compensation, fair compensation for classified staff and for teachers. And that would be essential to keep, not only to attract, but to keep the teachers that we have. So we don't have um, long-term substitutes. We have teachers who stay and stay and stay. That would be wonderful. Um, because that is what really affects our children's learning, is a staff that is the continuity of staff. 
and the quality of the staff. But I was going to say one thing that's really important about him besides all his work, I mean, the work in environmentalism is very important in terms of safety, but it also, um, to be a good environmental activist, you have to be able to collaborate, have curiosity, and have courage. And Adam has all those things. I know that he is a board member too, you know, need these things. He, need, he will be able to both, since he's been an activist in, in environmental organizations that are pushing for, um, for good causes, he knows that sometimes you have to collaborate with everyone. Sometimes you lead and sometimes you follow and sometimes you work with people you don't ag agree with. So as an activist, a community and environmental activist, he knows how to do that. You also have to have curiosity. Environmental activists, I would say, particularly, <laughs> right? Uh, what is going on? What is the li latest research? Who do I read to find out about this pesticide or that pesticide? So that curiosity is very important. And finally, you have to have courage, which Adam has too. You have to have that courage to say, you know what? This may be sound really radical to people, but we have to make these changes now. We have to do what's best for the children. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Okay, and our next three, Jovieta Molina, Sarah Fisher, and I only have Sarah on this, no last name. You're a teacher here at PBUSD. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to speak on behalf of Adam as well. I thank you for all your service. Thank you, Lowell. Thank you, Mr. Rivas. Thank you for coming out also. I just really want to encourage you to appoint Adam and encourage the other people who are um, vying for this seat to not push this special election. Do not waste the $80,000. Um, use that for our children, our schools. If you really care about our children and our schools, you will do that instead. I am the person, I am the classified worker that spoke with Adam and said I made less than $45,000. That was a lie. Um, I check my W-2, I make less than 35000 and I've been here in this di district for 27 years, and that is disgusting, I know, but I was lucky enough to be married to a man who went over the hill and worked in Silicon Valley and made a good living, and we were able to purchase a house. I cannot see that for my future um, employees that are coming up and, and trying to get a job with the district, and they're not going to be able to afford a house here. They're going to move somewhere else. They're going to move out of state if they're smart. Okay, so I really encourage Adam to go for that, what he believes in. I think he's going to fight for the good of the children, and by that I mean by getting a better salary for up-and-coming teachers and classified employees. I'm on my way out now. I'm going to retire in a year, and hopefully I will be well off. Thank you. Adam, you're the one. I'm also here in support of Adam Bologna Scal. <laughs> he and I both believe that there are different types um, of intelligence. I'm an artist myself. I make a living at it. And if it hadn't have been if it hadn't been for the classes that were offered when I was in school, I don't think I would have, you know, bought a house at 23 and and been able to make a living with my art. Um, when I was in second grade. I had a teacher tell me in front of my mother, your daughter's really cute, but she's just not that bright, and you're just going to have to accept that, because I had a hard time learning how to read. But again, with the help of and support of my teachers in high school, in the art realm, I believed in myself. Um, again, I'm, I'm in support of him because he truly does care about the future, our future musicians, artists, mechanics, chefs. And these are the people that make the world function. So thank you for your time. OK, um, good morning, Board of Trustees, and good morning, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, I am here today to ask that um, Adam Scow be appointed to the vacant board position. Adam has dedicated much of his life work to the environment and in particular he's currently working on um, ensuring that organic fields are next to schools in our area. I work at McQuitty, 
which uh, we do have a farm that's part organic and part not. And um, I believe that his dedication is going to bring better health to our community. Um, I like his idea of partnering with organic farms to provide food as well for our students. Um, his dedication to the health of our students and faculty and community alone should be enough reason for him to be appointed because what's more important than the health of our children? Um, he's also advocating for the classified and certificated employees. Um, he wants to provide higher wages for us and for um, our classified counterparts. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I feel like if this is done, teachers and classified staff, we can focus more on the needs of the students because we won't be so stressed out about getting kicked out of our ho homes because we can't make the payment. Um, and then we could actually be present in mind and body for our students, which is really important. Um, and I just really want to advocate for instructional aides because I think they're on the lowest part of the pay, total, pay um, scale. And these people work tire tirelessly. They're filling the roles of administrators, counselors, teachers. They're doing jobs that are way above their pay scale on a daily basis. Um, in particular, I have a student that's in first grade and he'll just shut down, refuse to talk, refuse to move. And I'm standing there with my 21st graders and this one kid that just won't budge. And uh, my, sorry, okay, my, anyway, go at him. Sorry, it went off on a, ta a tangent, but I think that's really Thank important. you. <laughs> Our next three, uh, Nellie Baquetta Bugs, uh, Christy Sushil. Okay, and Julie Baird. <laughs> Nellie will be here when she's off babysitting duty. Good morning, trustees. Um, thanks for holding this, having this venue so that our community can take part and as well as having the Google form available for those who can't be here in person to provide input. Um, I'm here as a, as a representative of the PBFT because as Nelly Bacchetta Boggs, no matter what I say, it's going to be the fa coming out of the mouth of the president of the teachers union. So <laughs> um, I'm just here to speak to, um, in, in your selection process, the thing that we value as educators or, and as an organization is that our trustees communicate with us. Um, that we shouldn't be the ones expected to chase you all down, but that we're part of that conversation. So in listening to the various candidates, who applicants for this position, what I listen for is who's speaking to, about including the educators and the classified staff in these conversations, because we all know that the only reason we're here is for our students, period that what we advocate for as an employee organization is for our students, period. In order for us to make sure that our workplace is safe and that our, it's safe and welcoming to everyone, I mean, we're, we're always welcoming everybody. We're teachers, that's what we do. But we need to be healthy in mind and body as well for our students. It's like that analogy that the, what we hear when we get on a plane, if that, you know, if the oxygen mask drops, you need to put it on the adult before you put it on the child because without the adults being um, sound in mind and body and knowing that their workload is sustainable, that they are respected and valued, we can then make sure that our students, our, that every year, that the student population that we work with, and even as a, as a site, that we are all working in a positive setting every year. Um, as a representative of our employee organization, I sit in a lot of um, meetings when it comes to, to work through, to problem solve through the issues that our administration and our um, and specific members might be having. So how does that all translate over to you as our trustees? Well. You are the board that holds the way that this district is managed accountable. You're important. 
It is important that you communicate with the employee organizations. It is important that we shouldn't be like, oh, we should invite them too. It's let's listen. Let's make sure that they are at the table when we are looking, when we are going through a process of what we want to maybe establish or, or put in, establish in our um, school sites. Because those things, when they impact our workload, that impacts our space of learning and teaching as well. So you've heard us say many different taglines. They're not just taglines, they're just actually the truth. Because if you don't have the people in front of your students to help guide them through their education, then you aren't really benefiting the students Thank as you. the trustees. Thank you. Christy? Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm running a little late. I swapped baby duty with my friend. Um, I'm going to speak to the choir here. I'm supporting Adam, so I'm not going to go into too much detail as to why, because I think many people just said a lot of the things that I would have and are about to say some of the things as well. Um, I just want to emphasize, though, that community communication is key. There has been a lot of controversial and um, interesting issues recently on the board um, from the pandemic and since. As you can see, I'm an Aptos parent. Um, and so for the most part, just knowing that people are approachable, open, and honest is super crucial. Um, and one individual for sure that will be doing that is Adam. He's already had multiple community meetings. He's made himself very open to the public, regardless if he's on the same opinion. Um, he's open and willing to discuss. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Julie. I'm also here to support Adam. I'm a parent. Um, my daughter is a recent graduate of PVSD, and my youngest daughter is um, in the school district now. I'm also a textile designer and an advocate for arts education, and that's why I'm here to support Adam. My art teacher in high school pointed me in the direction of textile design, and I've had a successful career in the arts, so um, I've always been an advocate for that. And as um, a former teacher with Mariposa Art, I was glad I was able to come into many of the schools in the districts and promote that also as an after-school program. Thank you. Okay, all right, um, next three, um, is Ron Sandigi? Sandage, sorry. Javier Vargas and Manuel Versiman. Sandije. Hmm. That's what I used to say when I was in Venezuela. I also have a comment um, that was sent to me uh, from somebody who can be here today, so I'm prepared to share that with you either orally or send it to you so you can see it later on if you want it. I think it's really important for all of us to recognize that when we're looking for somebody to represent us as an elected official, that you're looking for somebody who reflects the values and character and your belief system. For me, that's Adam Bolaños Scal. I've had a chance to get to know him in a variety of different ways. I won't go into detail right now. But he's the kind of person that listens, thinks, and challenges the people with whom he is speaking. He's always looking for solutions. I've had a opportunity to speak with him about this school district and education in general. I admire the fact that, like me, he is bilingual, he's a musician, and is interested in the kinds of things that are going to help the students and the families in our community. This is why it's very important that you select somebody to join you on the board that will best represent not only the people of Area 6, but also 
all of the people in the community, regardless if they have children in school, because the whole community s wants to support its public schools. And they're going to do that when policy and programs benefit all of the students in all of the schools. I'm a very proud former educator in this school district at both the classroom and management level. I've been a parent of two students who went through the school system here. And I can tell you, when I look around and see who we have had the chance to listen to today and the comments from the public, that's the man you want to appoint. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Javier Vargas, and I'm a parent of a student who graduated from Watsonville High School, and I'm really proud. And uh, he's now the main vocal singer for Carlos Santana for almost 22 years. Um, in, uh, in the past, when he graduated from from our district, you know, he was always uh, doing so many activities, but his main talent I noticed they was the talent that I already got from my parents too, being, uh, being involved in arts, music, and so that's why when I came to Watsonville, they invite me also to be part of a musical program and a, a cultural, multicultural program who was created here in Watsonville years in the past, was called Penny Club. And the Penny Club, <laughs> the Penny Club, thank you. The Penny Club was oriented to uh, uh, the low income students from, from this area who were uh, also creative, you know, but they probably, wasn't been able to bring their their own feelings, their own cultures to create it and benefit our community. So thanks to that program, I came over here too because they invite me to teach different areas, voice teacher, musical teacher, and that was a lot of recreation, a lot of activities in that program, created a lot of uh, environments for the kids, especially uh, from uh, high school programs. In, now I'll tell you, my son is created now, uh, been, uh, like I said, with singer with Carlos Santana for many years, and he created uh, a school, uh, Thank you. this program to fundraising to create a scholarship for, for, for kids from, from the school district, and especially on arts and music. I'm proud, and I would like to support my uh, friend musician also thank you that you know where I'm here for you Molanios, I'm sorry, there's a to help time you thank you, thank you very much I hope you can vote everybody vote for him thank, thank you, you. Thank you. well my name is Manobra Samin uh, if you're playing a drinking game I'm also a former mayor of Watsonville like Lowell <laughs> and Antonio um, now I'm a proud Stanford graduate um, because of people like Rhea Dehart, if you guys remember her. And actually, she's the one who told me this morning, make sure you go to this hearing, even though you don't go to school board hearings. Um, Antonia Rivas has helped thousands of first-generation, low-income kids in the Salinas Union High School District get to wonderful universities. Lowell Hurst helped the city of Watsonville through our, our current pension crisis, that's happening to every organization in the state. I don't know the other two candidates, but you have the makings of a great task force here in terms of raising wages in a place that is so complex because of our housing cost. From Pajaro to Cabrillo, 
I don't, I don't know of another district this complex in terms of housing, but I, I, I hope you all choose the right person. Um, I just want to leave you with this. When I tell people I went to Stanford and I'm from Watsonville, people say, well, that's exceptional. It should not be exceptional. It should be commonplace. We have great talent here. Please pick the right person that will stop the stilted educational achievement in the district. And if it's happening because our wages are low, then there's a huge problem. There's a huge disconnect. So I'm here because Rio would want me here today. Pick the right person. In the end, it's going to be about relationships. It's always who you're going to get along with, who's going to help the district. Pick the person that's going to be the right team member. But please help this young student trustee have a fighting chance to get to Stanford University. Okay, and our next three, Kathleen Kilpatrick, um, Woody, Okay, thank you. And um, <laughs> Moris is, I don't know if it's a Moriel or Morisel, and it's just an M for the last name. Oh, Student. Oh, Moriel. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning. Uh, Kathleen Kilpatrick, for those of you who are new on the board, uh, I was a school nurse with the district for 16 years. About half that time, I was. Uh, team leader for the school nurses, an informal position that, as far as I know, no longer exists. Um, I spent many hours in this boardroom <laughs> uh, at board meetings, and uh, I know what a hard job uh, it is to be a board member. And I, I really appreciate all those people coming forth, and you have a very diverse pool of talent to draw from here. So I really admire that. Most of the time I was here, it was either here about um, wages, salaries, and um, staffing issues, or about health and safety, which are totally inter interrelated issues. Health and safety is my main thing, and uh, I am concerned about uh, the uh, occupational exposures that teachers have, including pesticides. So that's the issue I'm working on now. Um, and definitely Adam has been working on that issue with me, and uh, I do value his contribution to that. But I also really value this idea of developing arts in the district. And that means not only the musical and visual arts, but also the culinary and gardening arts. Um, Music is math. Gardening and cooking are math and science. Uh, our students learn so much from, from participation in the, in the arts that that really needs to be a core part of our educational experience. The other big issue of our time is the environment. That's the issue that our uh, children are going to be facing and that our new generation of leadership is taking on. Some of us have been working on this for years. It's time for a new generation of leadership. I really value the contributions of our seniors, including myself, but I think it's time for a young vision for our district. So I, I encourage you to vote to uh, select Adam. Thank you. Hi, I'm Woody Rehanek. I taught a uh, special class at Freedom Elementary School uh, for 14 years, mild, moderate, grades 3, 4, 5, and four years before that at Salsi Puedes and Minty White. When I retired five and a half years ago, I was so burned out that I could not, this is the first time I have set foot in any uh, educational setting in the district. I, I did other things. I had to put myself together Humpty Dumpty style. And uh, I, I felt, uh, it doesn't matter what I felt, but I'm, I'm back together now and I'm here to recommend Adam, who 
a year and a half ago formed the uh, Campaign for Organic and Regenerative Agriculture to not only lower pesticides by school, but to offer in alternatives. Now, as a member of the Sierra Club, Wetlands Watch, Ray Generacion, Freedom Rotary, he's had a lot of involvement. Adam also was part of Food and Water Watch, uh, I believe a statewide organization. When he came to us, he said he was, he was burned out because it was hard to move the needle at the state level and he wanted to make a difference at the local level. So he's a good example of think globally, act locally. Uh, his arts, if you've ever seen Rosa Azul, his music group, he's, he's a virtuoso violinist. And when you think of the time and energy that he put into becoming that, he wasn't born that way, I'm sure. He puts the same kind of time and energy into environmental issues, and I sure will serve on the school board similarly. Uh, an amazing person, and uh, I just want to say that he's articulate, dy dynamic, and that uh, he's a bottom, bottom up grassroots organizer. Yeah, be proud to have him in our school board. Thank you. Hello, everyone. For those who don't know, my name is Moriel Mamarill. I attend Watsonville High School, and I'm honored to be this year's student trustee. But today I speak to you not as a member of the board, but simply as a student of PVUSD. Looking around the room, I think I'm the only student here, but I knew that I had to be here. And that's because each of us know very well and have seen how important it is to value the voices of our community. And I think part of that is having people on the board who are a reflection And I think part of that is having people on the board who are a reflection of our district, who have present, passionate involvement that go past prior experiences and knowledge. So I wanted to recognize Ms. Zuniga Samudio for that, and I say how much I appreciated your heartfelt responses. I support you as someone who students can relate to and see themselves in. I think re relatability and trust goes a really long way, and I think it's worth it to put our trust into someone who can grow alongside us on the board. At the same time, our district can benefit from someone who can capitalize on the momentum they've been building with a commitment to trust, transparency, safety, and well-being of students through art and environmental justice. So I'd like to extend my gratitude to Mr. Scow, who puts a great emphasis on those aspects of student growth because I have personally felt the positive effects of those kinds of opportunities that serve as alternative ways to act on intellectual curiosities and interests of students. Our education is something that cannot be taken away. And so we need to allow students to reach their greatest potentials. Because trust me, we all have it in us. We just need proper guidance and solid support systems. And for that to happen, we need the well-being of all educators as well as our classified staff, custodians, counselors. We need them to be healthy just as much as they need students to be well. And most of all, we need them to want to stay and more so for them to be able to stay. Thank you. Okay, and our next three are Jennifer Khan, Providencia, and I, Providencia Martinez Alanis, and Eileen Clark, Naguda? Naguda? Okay. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Jennifer. No? It's on? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I'm Jennifer Kahn. I'm a retired um, PVUSD um, school teacher. Um, I retired right before the pandemic, so I dodged that bullet. Um, I'm a 38-year veteran teacher. I taught in, at PVS at McQuitty for 34 years in the same classroom, kindergarten, and Adam is now in my classroom here to advocate for Adam bolaños Scow. And um, I'm so happy that he's doing music in the classroom there because when I was a teacher there, we did a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, and, and we need that. And I was chided for doing too much singing and dancing, but. I did it anyway because I knew that it was good 
for the children, for their learning. Um, I'm also, I was also the union rep for many years, and I belong to SAS, the Safe Egg, Safe Schools, and I know that Adam advocates for, you know, pesticides and organic farming. We have a field right outside McQuitty School, and many of the schools here have that. And so the, the music, the, the, um, the pesticide, the, the health and welfare of our, of our students, he, he, knows, he knows the teachers, he knows the classified, he knows parents, he works with the students, so he's a perfect represent, representative to be on the school board because he's in touch with all of that. And as my um, grandmother, who was also a retired school teacher who was from Kentucky but lived and taught in California for, and raised my father here, would say he's salt of the earth, he has a good heart, and he um, is also a do-gooder, as she said. <laughs> and as my, my Mexican grandma, mi, mi abuelita mexicana, would say, tiene ganas, he has the desire, um, es bien trabajador, he's a hard worker, and one more thing. Uh, <laughs> and what, oh, I forgot. Anyway. Oh, he, um, he has buena gente, and he's a good person. So, thank you. <laughs> I probably don't need a microphone, but I'll use it anyways. <laughs> good morning to everybody. Um, I'm here um, to speak about my really good friend, Adam. Uh, everybody else already said everything else that needed to be said about him. Everything is true. Um, but the way he plays the violin, if you guys haven't heard him, you'll fall in love just with that because he does it with so much passion and love and you can feel it. But just like he does that with the violin, in the same way he dedicates himself to all the other issues and he cares so much about this community, I get to talk to him about all of the above that was just mentioned. I get to spend a lot of quality time with him. He's my really good friend. And as a friend, he always listens. And he's always there. He's always available. So he's a great person, just as a whole. He's a great asset for you guys to have on the board. I really think he would make you guys a little bit um, step it up. You know, he would bring bring it to the table. He would bring a challenge to the table, which is what I think that this school board needs so that things can be addressed and, and, and changed because we need a lot of things in this, in this district to change, not just to be addressed, but to make a change. Things need to be different. There needs to be um, more responsibility and people need to actually get out there and do something about what's really going on. I'm a parent of two kids in the district and I don't, I, I don't feel very um, happy about my daughter in high school going to school and still spending three periods in one day in the gymnasium. Um, I don't appreciate that she's not able to get the education that she has a right to, to get because there's bullying going on in school and some teachers can't, you know, they don't have the training to be able to detect that. I don't appreciate when my daughter is not heard by her counselor because they're too busy with other appointments. It's been two years and she still hasn't been able to get in there with her counselor. So there is a lot of issues. Not only with my daughter is that happening, it's happening with many other parents. I, I get together with a lot of different parents from the city and they all have different issues and some have the same as me. So make the right choice and elect Adam. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eileen Clark Nagoka. I am a um, retired teacher from PVUSD and um, parent of, of graduates of PVUSD. Um, I agree with everything that has been said about Adam, and I'm also here to support him. Um, I, but I wanted to, to highlight another quality of his that hasn't been spoken up so much, and, and that is that he's such a great listener. I've um, worked with him. I'm part of Regeneración, a climate action group, and he's a board member for our group. And I also worked on his 2020 campaign. And um, 
I just couldn't believe how well he listened to me, how much time he devoted to answering my questions. And I knew, you know, I was one of many people he had to talk to. And he um, just gave so much time and listened so well. Um, and I just also wanted to say that um, I, he, he um, is a newcomer as compared to, to others whose, whose experience I, I really respect, the, the other um, candidates who've, who've um, worked in city government and other capacities. I know them and respect them very much, but um, I think it's so powerful to have new eyes on, on old stubborn problems. It's, I think you know, I've, seen, I've seen it happen where a new member of a group can bring a, a, a fresh perspective, and I think it's time that we do have some, uh, some new eyes on these stubborn old problems that we've had in our district for a while especially um, wages and housing and, um, and safety. So thank you very much. I support Adam. OK, and our. Um, final two speakers for today, and there's no last name here, uh, Maria, and then Bobby. Buenos dias, good morning. Uh, my name is Maria, and I attended PVUSD, and all of my five siblings still attend PVUSD. When I was a student, I was part of the ELD program, and we never got access to music. Um, we were stuck in the same classroom with the same teacher, except for PE and maybe Spanish class. Um, so I really appreciate Adam's uh, willingness to bring more um, attention to art. But also, we need to be healthy. Um, and the fact that he's actively advocating for the health of our community, and you know, to know that my siblings are still um, exposed to pesticides in their, in their schools. Um, I really value that he is actively doing that. We not only need experience, but we need people that care. And I think Adam really does that. Thank you. All right. Hello, trustees. Um, my name is Bobby Marchesalt. Uh, I live in Do uh, Trustee Dodge's district. Uh, I have three students in the district, parent of a Watsonville High student, go Wildcats. And uh, I'm also a teacher, a music teacher in the district here. So uh, Mr. Scow, I thank you and uh, appreciate your advocacy there. Uh, and look forward to hopefully getting to know you at some point. Um, I am here today to ask you uh, to appoint Mr. Lowell Hurst uh, to this seat. Uh, I commend you for not paying for a special election. We all know what that would have taken. Um, we did, however, in that take that choice away from that community, and that's important to recognize. And I want to point out that over the years uh, that Ms., uh, your former colleague, Ms. Orozco, has been uh, elected over and over again with a community that trusts her judgment, and I know that she is supporting Mr. Hurst. And I think that needs to be taken very seriously uh, in moving forward, considering the situation. Um, that should carry a lot of weight. Um, I would love for you to appoint Mr. Hurst to that seat, and then I would actually love to see this four-way race play out in uh, 2024. I think it would be a great race, and I'd love to see it happen. Um, personally, about uh, Mr. Lowell Hurst, I know that uh, 32 years of teaching is an asset. Uh, asset. Um, I also have seen him uh, on my own in, his, in both policy and personal life. I've seen him advocate for vulnerable communities, and I appreciate that. Um, and I have not always agreed with Lowell on everything, but I have found that he is willing to listen uh, and thoughtfully and critically consider the other side. So I think he would be a great person to finish out uh, Ms. Maria Orozco's uh, seat uh, and then see what happens uh, in elections at the end of next year. Uh, whoever gets appointed this morning, I do look forward uh, as a teacher and advocate in the district to working alongside you, whoever that is. Um, and I do need a fiddle player for St. Patty's Day. So if you're interested, you know, let's talk. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go on to item 3.3, and it's the uh, public comment on um, item 3.1. So we're going to take a brief recess to allow board members a chance to review the 14 comments provided by the public. So 
we're about 15, we'll take 15 minutes. So we'll come back, well, let's say, yeah. Oh, so 12, how much did, 12, or 12.25, let's just make it 12.25. All right. We're going to go ahead and reconvene. So we're going to go ahead and get started again. And so the board will now discuss possible nominations and vote. The majority of the board members under Ed Code um, 35164, which means four votes, must agree on one candidate. And our six uh, member board requires the majority of four regardless of the numbers of members present. So even though you know we have an absent seat, it's the, it's the four. Um, just as a reminder from the update that I gave on Wednesday, one way that we might consider you know this process is to hold nominations until members, you know, trustees have had a chance to make comments and you know express you know their preferences. If there's a nomination and we don't achieve a, a majority, then we, you know the then the vote fails, right? And then we go to an appointment process. We can go through like if people who have cast a dissenting vote can rescind and we can revote. But in the interest of streamlining the process, if we wait until we get a sense of how things go, that might make it a little bit more streamlined. What we can do is if we narrow it down to you know top candidates we can decide on some additional questions to ask those top those final candidates okay so with that i'll open it up for the deliberation um, are there any trustees who would like to make comments Trust okay trustee dodge jr so just to clarify, if, if we don't come up with any decision and it goes to a special vote, we're looking at November? That is correct. Oh, okay. That's a long time, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that out. Thank you. And Trustee DeSerpa, it looked like you had a, you wanted to make a comment? Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, I feel so grateful that we have four excellent candidates today. Um, we are so fortunate to have the field that um, put their hat in the ring. They're all, um, they all have excellent qualifications. Having said that, um, I really appreciate Lizette Zuniga, mostly because she has children in the school and she's boots on the ground. She's served on a site council and DLAC committees um, and as a community volunteer, and I think that she would do a great job. And I think Morielle said it beautifully that she would grow with the board. So, um, so I think she is maybe not the most experienced candidate that we have, or decorated, but definitely somebody that um, would do a beautiful job. So thank you for putting your name in the, in the ring, and thank you to everybody who's here today. You're all in incredibly qualified, and I would be happy to serve with any of you. Thank you. Anyone else want to make a comment? Trustee Soto? Oh yeah, I just want to comment uh, and concur with Trustee DeSerpa that uh, yeah, the candidate pool is very strong across the board. 
Um, everybody has their unique and individual qualities. Um, I'm still bouncing around in my head right now, but uh, I just want to wish each and every one of you luck, and we'll see how this turns out. Um, and thanks again for throwing your names in the hat and stepping up. <coughs> I think uh, actually had a bigger turnout than what I personally expected for this, so that's good. So that means people are involved and want to get involved. And um, you know, everybody's talking about progress. You know, hopefully, you know, we can get somebody that that wants to move forward with progress and newer ideas. So, thank you. Trustee Flores. Um, I want to thank all four candidates. Um, it, it's amazing that you guys are willing to step up and want to be here to serve your community. Um, I, you know, wish that. Area 6 was here and had their voice to be heard. I feel like we had an overwhelming amount of support for um, Adam today. And of course, you know, that's going to um, play into my decision. Um, we, we are left with, you know, the public comments and the comments that were here. And then also, you know, I, I appreciate all of your applications. Um, and so I, I think just from what I've read from the applications and from what, you know, we've um, seen today here and read with the comments. Um, I think um, Adam Scal, you would would be great on our board. Thank you, Trustee Costa. Yes, um, I want to chime. Um, I think what's been said by at least three of my colleagues at this point um, that um, this is a, a great diverse pool of applicants, and I'm just grateful to all four of you for applying and being a part of the process and. Um, I am also grateful for all the input we've had from the public, people who have given up a Saturday morning um, to be here and to give their input, those that put in their input comments on the Google Doc. Um, you know, there was, I think, a bit of a backlash that we, the board made this decision to move in this direction to not hold a special election but to appoint um, the cost of the election. Sure, maybe that was part of the factor. Um, but also there was, um, for, I know for several of us up here, we didn't want to see trustee area six go unrepresented until November, which would, and a November election, which would actually be December when that person would take office. So that would effectively be a whole year. And that's just not fair to the constituency base of that area. Um, so, and I do feel um, we have heard um, a lot from that constituency area in public comment today in the Google form online. Um, I have only been reached out and spoken to by community members about two of the four candidates. And if it was just a personal decision for me and it was just my, me as a person making it based on my own personal, I think my decision would be one way. Um, so I could say in that sense it's a little bit complicated. Um, and there was even a question with all the candidates about your personal values and beliefs, right? Um, but it's not about me as a person, right? My personal values. It's about me sitting up here as a trustee who doesn't represent this area, but I've heard a lot of feedback from um, people in that area. And there has been concerns. Um, some of those have included concerns about this um, looking at a swapping of seats between Councilmember Emeritus Hurst and current Councilwoman Orozco, former Trustee Orozco. Um, they're not related, but it's almost, the feedback I've gotten, it's almost a nepotism feel. It's sort of like the dynasty, only certain people get to stay in certain roles. Um, and then the other is obviously ample feedback we've been hearing about Mr. Bolano Scow. So. As I said, my decision, if it were me personally, would be probably one way, but um, hearing the community I, and folks that live in trust, that trustee area, I think I would have to agree with um, Trustee Flores that it seems that that slate is leaning towards Mr. Bolano Scow. But thank you again for all of you who did um, come in and apply and were part of this process, and you know, there will be an election inevitably. <laughs> Um, in 2024 in that area um, and I hope you all s who is 
not for the three that are not selected today, I do hope you still stay actively involved in our community and come to other board meetings and keep us all in check. Thank you. I know for you know myself, it's like in, in hearing your statements um, and hearing you speak. Um, you know, for for many of you, I've I've had opportunities to to speak with you, you know, over the years or or worked with you, and some of you I haven't had that opportunity, but I've appreciated your comments. And it, this was again echoing what some of my colleagues have said. We have a wealth of opportunity in the four of you. Um, there are no bad choices here. When I look at, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the, the feedback that we're getting from the community, and we talk about the public comments that we have, and we had 20 public comments here today. We had 14 written comments. But at our last board meeting, we, we spoke about you know, one of the challenges of an appointment is recognizing that it is, it is bypassing, you know, a democratic process. It is an, op there is an opportunity for the public to have their say. But if we're looking at, you know, how votes go, and I appreciate the uh, optimistic uh, glass 41% full spin of the vote of the last election. But in the last election, when the, when the voters of the district had an opportunity, almost 60% of the voters chose someone else. That's, impor that's an important factor to me. For, for Mr. Scow, our, I think our politics align. I think we agree on so many issues. When I think about um, Mr. Hurst, it's like you bring a wealth of experience. And it's like I've seen your advocacy. You know, I've seen you out on picket lines supporting labor organizations. I've seen you take at action, you know, to support workers, you know, and, and I know you're out there in the community. It's like you've been a teacher. You know, you know, you, could, you can drop into the role. Ms. Zuniga Zumudio, I really appreciated how you responded to the, the questions. You answered the question that was asked. I really appreciate direct answers. And it's like, to me, that demonstrates listening. And that's really important. And you know the fact that you are, you know, from the PVSD system that you have, you know, students, you know, in this district, you have children, you know, you've got skin in the game. You know, Mr. Rivas, you know, your wealth of experience was impressive to me. Um, for me, it's like I, you know, if if I had to, my top choice right now would be Mr. Hurst, followed by, you know, Ms. Zuniga Zamudio. Close second. That's where I'm leaning. Anybody else want to weigh in? Does anybody, any further comments? Yeah, this, this isn't an easy decision, believe me. And. I, I advocated for the election initially, but because of the time frame, you know, I, I agreed to, to do this process. And, and it's like Trustee Acosta said, it's not fair to the constituents to leave them out to hang, you know, for another year or so. They need, they need someone to step in. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I was bouncing around in my head, but listening to the comments from my fellow trustees and the level of support in this room today, you know, it's obvious that there's a connection for Mr. Scow in that area based on, you know, his representation today. That can't be denied. Um, so, Ms. Zuniga, you're very impressive. And, uh, 
you know, you, you, you've got a lot, a lot of years ahead of you to, to make a change eventually and try to step into something at some point. Mr. Hurst, you, you know, you, you've been around for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, thank you for that. And Mr. Rivas, uh, if you're still in the room, uh, you as well, you know, you bring a wealth of knowledge with your experience as well. But um, like I said, based on the support level today in this room, uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with Trustee Flores and Trustee Acosta and, and uh, suggest Mr. Scow. You know, like I said, the, the election will be inevitable. This is just until the term ends and then we'll, we'll find out if, if, it's, uh, if someone will stick around or someone else will step in. You know, that, that might be your opportunity. So, uh, or anybody else for that matter. But uh, that's where I stand. Thank you. Trustee so, Dodge Jr. So we're looking for direction, like a majority of a direction. Is that what we're doing at this moment? It's, we're having a discussion. Okay. Well, just kind of, you know, after hearing what my colleagues were saying, um, 2,400 people already voted for Adam. He knows the issues at Bradley, Calabasas, Rolling Hills, uh, Duncan Holbert. Many in the arts community support Adam Bolano Scow. Many health advocates here today support Adam Bolano Scow. Many local community members here today and watching us, many current and retired teachers that are here today, even a former teacher of mine, Ron Sandage, who came to speak today. <laughs> and a lot of those, not a lot, but a few of those emails are from my constituents, and I see constituents here that support Adam Bolano Scow. And not all of them, but you know, thank you for coming and letting your voice be known. And so, you know, I know there's a lot of people, but 2,400 voters said that they wanted Adam, and I agree with those 2,400 voters. All right. Does the board feel comfortable moving forward with a nomination? I'll entertain a uh, nominate. I'll entertain a motion. A motion to move forward in support for Mr. Scow. I have a first. I'll second. Eva, could you please do the roll call? Trustee Dodge, your vote? Aye. Trustee Flores, your vote? Aye. Trustee DeSerpa, your vote? Aye. Trustee Soto, your vote? Aye. Vice President Acosta, your vote? Aye. President Holm, your vote? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right, so um, then uh, I'll be sworn in at the next board meeting at f on February 22nd, and our meeting is adjourned at 1243.